I just picked up a smoker. So why didn't I end up hunting such an amazing duck hunt? Stick around. What do you say about that tonight? What a hunt. I'm Claudio Angaro, and I take people hunting. You know what to do. <laughs> you know, this pea field, there's a, there's a little cattail rim slough and it's right on the road, unfortunately. Oh, I drive by and it's kind of been active all year. You know, I'm driving by this morning, I saw the swirl of ducks there on the feed and then I drove by the puddle and the puddle is just absolutely loaded. Hoping to be in there either tomorrow morning or definitely in the afternoon, we'll see how it goes, but what a great, a great duck hunt. You know, and it's just, it's classic, right? The ducks are gonna puddle first thing in the morning and they hop out to feed and, you know, rather than be on the feed, there's nothing like hunting ducks over a small pond of water like that when they're coming in hard and hot. Kill these guys, kill the two, kill the two. Anyways, excited. I've got to put this in some sort of context for you. So on that morning, I picked up that smoker duck hunt. Of course, things happen fast and you got to have all of the information. Our objective is to get all of our clients, all of their ducks and geese, every day. Well, I have to race further north to check on another hunt. By the time I get back, this hunt here is ghost town. I checked the puddle right by the road, empty. I went over the hill, empty. I didn't have all the duck information, but I knew there was enough ducks to kill what Mel needed. I go in to pin the field, check out the landscape. I go to this real cattail slough bottom, seeing if I could use it for cover. Well, it ended up being there must have been enough water in there. The ducks blew out of there. But at this point, I really needed the combo. I'm literally five yards. That duck was three yards from me. Look at this, look at this. That duck stole. This is crazy. This little puddle can't be 30 yards across. And I don't know, a thousand mallards come out of there and it's still coming out. There's a few geese that poured into here first thing in the morning. And then of course I was gone for an hour and a half, came back, it was loaded up with geese, which didn't surprise me because there were some in here, but the ducks from the other feed abandoned that. And I went there to check the puddles because we were gonna go in there. We had about eight ducks to kill on Jason's hunt. And that, well, no problem, just kick them out, go set up at three o'clock, shoot their eight ducks. Well, there's not a duck over there. And I was just looking for a place to hunt the geese and I could hear them in there. So I'm missing quite a bit of information on this duck hunt. So without having that information, even to go in and kill eight ducks can be highly risky when you're not on the X. Absolutely mind boggling how fast things can change, you know, and they, they moved a mile. So, you know, you go sit there thinking, well, I spotted them there in the morning. They're puddling hard over there. I bet you not a duck goes in where they were this morning. By the time I get back to the lodge, the hunters are all having lunch. Some of them are having naps. Others are wondering what's going on for the afternoon. Chrissy's got the birds all off the photo deck. I'm starving at this point. I've got to get my sh stuff together to get these guys out and hunting. And I still have to scarf down some meat because I'm on this newly found carnivore diet which I'm totally loving by the way. The intel I had on this hunt was absolutely perfect to cover Mel's guys. I managed to get everybody organized, everybody together, and we roll out by about 2.30. Another afternoon spec hunt. Uh, I gotta try to pull off 30 geese and 16 ducks. So uh, Mel's hunt went a little sideways on him this morning. I mean, he still had a good, you know, 24 ducks, 10 geese, wasn't horrible, but when we got here, it was a north wind. For now, it's switching west southwest so i made a few adjustments to the decoys uh we got out early like we left the lodge at about 2 30 because there was cloud cover and there was some forecast for rain and now look behind us there there's no clouds there it's pretty much pretty much as bluebird as you can see to the northwest so you know they're all sitting on that roost sucking on the margaritas and when they you know when they decide to leave the pool i'm sure they're all going to leave the pool at once so it's going to be fast and furious and you know, I don't know that we'll have time to, to kill 30 when it's no wind like this and they come off that way, but wish me luck. I'm gonna need it tonight. We are loaded. Smile, guys. <laughs> Hi there, Claudio. Hello, hello. <laughs> and now the wind's really flat and slightly shifting. Made a few changes and it's starting to get a little stronger and it's starting to pivot more and more. 
and getting stronger as the night progresses. And I thought, oh man, we just got it dialed in and the birds were on us. Peekaboo. What's going on in that blind? Hey, <laughs> we're ready to my... roll. Yeah. Kill this one, guys. Kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill them both. Kill them both. One in the robo, one in the robo. All right, that's one. Not skunked. No, not skunked. You, if he comes straight over, you try him. You can kill him. Go, 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 go. Get, get out in front of him. Nice, told you. That's a that's a chip shot with this stuff, man. I'm telling you. Chip shot. Shot, Ray. So why do I use heavy hammer? Everyone thinks hunting in Canada that the birds are always on your toes and it's just so simple all the time. But it, it's not always the case. I mean, these birds have a lot of room. They have a lot of feed options. There's lots of real estate. So if they see anything wrong, they're not coming in. They're not going to do it. My responsibility to my clients and, and maybe to my viewers is to take the experience that I have and, and parlay it into successful hunting opportunity. So why is heavy hammer so lethal? 15% of the pellets are bismuth. They're coming out of here at 1,500 feet a second, and when they hit, they hit hard. They come over. Go, guys, go. You got to try them. Get out there. Shoot them. Yeah, 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 boys. Maybe go get that one. There's three. three. You busted them. On the robos. Go, 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 go. Did you get the third yeah, one on the right? Yeah. yeah. They'll finish perfectly. All right, guys, this pass would... We'll kill these ducks. There's another group behind them. But, Is there? Yeah. They're, they're right up, right up ready, front. Ready, ready, ready. Go, guys. Go, go, go. Right up. Right low, 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 low. Right there, right there, right there. Low, low, low. I didn't see how many went down. Ooh. You got one? I got one. I got one back here. Right over the robos. Let's see if they finish in here. They get a hook. They get a hook. Get ready. Get ready. Get right ready. Side, get right ready. Side. Get ready. Let them hook. Let them hook. Go, 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 go. That was cool. Let these ones work. Oh, right there, right there. Go, 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 go. Right there, right there, right there, right there, right there, right there. Nice. They're on the robos. <laughs> we better count them. How many? Two. Okay. Be right in front. Look of at you. the low ones. Look at the low ones. Get ready. Get ready. Ready. Go kill those. Try them. Try them. Try them. You can kill them. Wasn't perfect, but I didn't want to risk them fucking off on us. Got a big flight of ducks overhead. Duck? Yeah. These two. Good thing we changed the blind, you know. I'm glad we did. Yeah. Kill them, boys. Kill them. Wow. Beautiful. Hey, all right. It's the bismuth, right? Like there's 15% of those pellets are bismuth. The, these shells, you can feel these shells. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, you know, like to get the bismuth going that fast. Yeah. It, like, you know, could you imagine when we were shooting lead if it went instead of 1,100 feet, 1,500? Oh, You'd never God. miss a bird. No. And they'd all die. And they'd all die. They'd all die. You're absolutely right. Kill them, kill them, kill them, kill them. Kill them. That's dangerous shit. I've been hit by enough of those. <laughs> geese, geese wing set. Yeah, they, they still, they're still coming, guys. Get ready. Left side, just get ready. Oh my god, look at this shit. Hey guys, get okay. ready. Let them hook. We're going to last, okay? Stop, my dude. Right in front. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait, 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 <laughs> no way, right side, watch, he's gonna be setting in the hole. Ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready. Oh, get. Go, guys, go, go, it's not perfect. That one. 
<laughs> like that was crazy. Uh, oh, that was unbelievable. Wing set, guys, right there. Uh, see him? Yeah, Get ready, guys. I don't see him. Oh, that goes all out. Watch your head. Watch yourself. Oh, kill that one. Oh, good call, good call. <laughs> That's a legitimate overrule of a guide's goal right there. Just go, go, guys. Quite often, you don't get the entire picture, whether you're in a blind or you're behind the hunters, and it's best to have a relationship with your clients that allows them to override your call once in a while. There's a real fine line between being in control of the hunt and a control freak on the hunt. I'd rather be wrong and have a client jump and make the call then miss an opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try it, ready? Try it, go, 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 dude. Oh, look at them all. Right there, right there. Nice, nice. <laughs> we got all five. Oh, boy. Right. They might do it, guys. They didn't flare. Here they come, guys. Go, oh, guys, kill those two. That's beautiful. Get it, get it. Oh, no. oh, oh damn it! Oh. Heavy hammer, baby. Look at this thing set up. Get ready, boys. They fly over. We're gonna go on him. They fly over. We're gonna go on him. Kill these two guys. Kill them. Beautiful. Oh, nice. One more. One more. Nice. Oh, 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 kill those ducks, guys. Right there. Kill those four. What do you think of that? Yeah, awesome. Is that fun? Having fun. All right, this time, guys, they're going to do it. Get ready. There's a spin of death right here. Get ready, guys. Just look over the robos when we open the doors. Go, 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 go. I missed that one. I think we're done. <laughs> what do you say, Bob? That was wonderful, Claudio. Really? Thank you very much. That awesome. awesome. That was a good one today. You guys want a big pile? You want to hold the ducks and we'll lay the geese out nice? And you can hold the ducks? Sure. That'll look good, yeah, I think. That'll look yeah. great. Yeah. It's a nice green. Yeah. really starting to look good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What do you say about that tonight? What a hunt. Right. Amazing. 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 All right, so... We managed to get it done tonight, I'll tell you what. Uh, we got the ducks we needed and, uh, and the geese. So we shot 30 geese tonight and 16 ducks. So that was, you know, you like to have strong mornings because it puts a lot of pressure on us for the afternoon, right? I mean, it, and it's not like you got to get your limits all the time, but we like to, and we like to do it for them. So, and uh, these guys like Ray... He's been here since 1995. I think he missed one year with COVID and one year he had a knee replacement or something. So he's been here a long time. So, I mean, he's he's seen the great hunts. He's seen the bad hunts and and they get it. Uh, so what happened tonight was we had a northwest wind and a northwest wind predicted through the entire night. And it was kind of an odd setup and I would have preferred a southeast wind or southwest wind. So we got all set up and, and I came early on purpose because it was cloudy. There's a little bit of variation in some of the weather models. There's a little bit of precipitation and then there was no precipitation, but the wind was showing consistent northwest switching to northeast by like nine o'clock, right? So kind of through the whole evening of the flight. So. You know, I set up straight north. We had a straight north wind when we set up and it was a perfect wind. Get here early while the clouds drift off. I can see them off in the distance. Sky got perfectly blue as you see behind me there. And then the wind went flat and we just finished setting up. And I caught the odd puff catching me on the out of the west. I thought, okay, I'll just modify some decoys. I'll see what happens. Well, it's five o'clock and it switched straight out of the southwest and not strong but enough to cause concern. And I'd already moved the decoy rig and it was kind of starting to get ugly. And then it was five o'clock or five after five and I 
I checked the weather apps again and the wind apps, very specific to where I was, and they had changed. So the forecast had moved to uh, southwest and increasing to the southwest by nine o'clock. So I just said to the guys, I said, listen, guys, it's five. They probably won't move till 545 or so, or maybe six. Now that it's clear, we have time. Do you want to move? And I said, it takes 25 or 30 minutes, but we got to hustle. And I said, if it works, it'll be awesome. And if we stay like this, it could get ugly. And they said, you know what? Let's just make the move. Boom, we're done fast. And, you know, I moved the electronics and all of a sudden, you know, the flight started and it was absolutely chaotic for about one hour. And, uh, you know, we, we hunted out of the upright blinds again, just bald pea field. We shot dive bombs. You know, they made some great shots. I mean, not all the birds tonight were sitting right over the decoys just because there was no wind. But, I mean, they made some tall shots. They made some real close shots. I mean, we had birds landing in the blind. And, you know, it was, it was fun. It was a great night. They're happy. And it's funny because Ray, Ray's been with us for, like I said, you know, what is that, 95, 28, 29 years, whatever, 27 years of probably hunting with us. And uh, he just said he's never had a hunt where geese so many did so many funny things, you know. So it's cool. Made them real happy and life's good. Time to get back to the camp. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one.